Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about lens color. This video is not sponsored by any brand, it is sponsored by myself and all the brilliant members of this channel. Last month something came to my attention uh, when I was browsing on Vero. Uh, it was a video from Ivan Ferreiro uh, and he, he showed, showed us um, a kind of a color, a lens color and that it could possibly replace the L bracket. So what is this lens color? Uh, what is this thing? What it does? The first company to came up with this idea was Atoll. Atoll is a brand that had kickstarted the, their product. And this product here, uh, this lens color, is from Sunway Photo. This is an alternative to the Atoll solution. And why exactly this caught my attention? Uh, as you know, I have made a video about uh, L bracket, where you can check here on the link. The L bracket I use every day on my camera for uh, architecture and interior photography and also for landscape photography. This lens color, it has the same function as the L bracket. However, there is a great advantage on this you don't have the parallax error that you have on the L bracket. Another big advantage is that you can rotate this and your camera in any position that you want. As I do photography for a living, any gain uh, in productivity, uh, in quality, in agility, in making the photos, for me, it's a good deal because it can be paid with uh, one photo shoot or maybe two photo shoots sometimes because I can make more photos in less time so my productivity is increased and this thing here this lens color it helps a little bit some a few seconds on the setup uh, from your camera from the um, from the horizontal position to the vertical position it's a little quicker than the L bracket this lens color I bought from AliExpress, so I will leave a link here in the description of this video. It came in this uh, little uh, card box here, and uh, this is the LS75, which I bought for, for my Canon 5D Mark IV, uh, which basically I use with two lenses, the 1740mm and the 70-200mm. So they have two models. This is the LS75 and there's also the LS63. This is most done for smaller cameras, but it can fit any uh, DSLR or mirrorless cameras. But the LS63, the, the smaller one, is made only for uh, Sony cameras. And this one is for any other brand and bigger cameras. So I'm going to show you how to assemble this on your camera. So first, I have removed the lens from my camera body, okay? Uh, and then I also removed any, uh, uh, for example, I removed the L bracket or any camera plate you might have here. So I will get, this is the uh, inner ring and outer ring. So first, I'm going to put this um, here, as you can see. This is where it goes on the tripod. So it slides here in the tripod with Arca Swiss compatible. So I'm going to put it, place it here and then I will screw those two here by using the smaller Allen key supplied. So this goes on the tripod, okay? For example, here I have an Arca Swiss tripod, so I can mount it here, okay? If you don't have Arca Swiss uh, plate, you can mount, uh, you have those, these two, uh, two kinds of screws here, where you can mount on any tripod. Next, we have two options here. One is, uh, there are two camera plates, right? It has this rubber here, both of them, in order not to sleep. And 
one of them is thicker than the other, as you can see here. I'm using this one, the thicker one for the 5D Mark IV, but it, it, it depends on your camera, okay? So, because this will go here and you will have to kind of regulate uh, the height because here you have the, the, the camera, the, the lens, uh, lens center, and here you have the camera. So if your camera is a smaller camera, maybe it will go up. If your lens is, uh, or if your camera is, um, is bigger, probably it will go down. So this is what we're going to do. But before doing that, we need to rotate the color by unlocking this knob. And then you go from here. This is only to facilitate our operation. Here you can see this uh, this little uh, spherical dot here. It can it has uh, grooves each ninety degrees, and you can hear a click when it goes here. Okay, so let's assemble here. Remember, it's this is the opposite side. Okay. So this one is here and then this one goes this way. So we need to, uh, now we need to just place the screws, okay? You don't have, at this point, you don't have to, to put too much pressure on the while assembly because we will adjust this later when we put on the camera. So you just have to uh, just place the uh, both screws, okay? And they will go like that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we can twist this, uh, rotate back, place like this, and then we go down our camera. Okay, so we have to put this on our, our camera now. So you can use either this one supplied or I have this one which I use also for the L bracket. So I will put here. Don't worry about this position. If it's too much here uh, or too much there, it's just make sure that it has some room available here. Okay. So I will place around here. I won't over tight this because uh, this thread uh, on the camera, the tripod thread is very weak, so don't overdo it, okay? Just a little pressure and it's done. And now, here comes the tricky part. So you have to first, you have to align this with your lens, okay? So if it's here, so you, you have to make sure that this is in the center. So by looking at it, probably around, yeah, around here, I would say. The best thing to do is do, do something like this, rotate this up, and then you have the screws here. So then you have a better overview, so you can adjust accordingly. When you make sure this is on the center, then you can, you can tighten this time. It, it is basically done, but we need to make sure we go back here and then now I'm going to to put my lens okay lens put and now I'll just twist it this side Make sure that sometimes it can get here on the grip. Take a look at this. It's getting on the grip. It's almost hitting the grip. Almost. So this is a thing that you might want to look out. Okay. It depends on the, on the, uh, on the lens you're using. Uh, if you put too much here, it will get uh, in front of the lens color, lens ring the zoom ring, sorry. So here there is some place for you to zoom in, zoom out, and also the focus ring is 
unobstructed. So this could either go here or it could go also here between those two rings. So make sure, depending on the lens, you place this accordingly, okay? Uh, that's pretty much it. You can leave this in your camera like this, okay? It's, it's done. Now let's see an example assembling on the tripod. This one is an Arca Swiss compatible ball head. Put it here. And you have place it. Release this knob and Turn it in any position that you want. This is exactly the same concept as used on the lens collar for the big lens. If you have a big lens, you can also use it. Uh, you can still uh, place the collar and just change the lens because the, the lens collar is fixed on the camera. So if you have, for example, another uh, lens, it's just Take this lens off, put your big lens, of course you have to remember this height, and that's it. And if you have a different tripod head, for example this one, that is used, I use a lot for uh, architecture photography, then it's the same. It's also Arca Swiss compatible, so I'll place it here, and I will screw here. Remember, each head is different, and you have to make sure that the knobs for your head doesn't get in the way of when you, for example, twist it. For example, here, I can't twist because it's getting on the way. So sometimes you need to make sure which is the best place to assemble it, either one side or the other. So it has to run free, smooth, nothing in the way. So here I can do a 360 degrees. I have assembled the lens collar on both my 5D Mark IV and also on the SL2, which is recording this video. So for uh, different cameras and different lenses, it will be a different setup, as I showed. A great advantage of the lens collar is that you can have more flexibility on the composition. So you don't have to limit yourself for horizontal or vertical. So you, with this, you can go into any position. It's way faster moving from a horizontal uh, orientation to like portrait mode and in between them. And there are these little marks here uh, from 90 degrees to 90 degrees that you can uh, listen a clip. Like it fits on the 90 degrees positions. Since this is mounted on camera and you've got your lens, uh, the center, the optical center of your lens is uh, within this uh, diameter here. You can turn your camera in any position and you will have zero parallax error. With the L bracket, you get a little bit of error because when you are horizontal, when you move to vertical, sometimes the optical center of the lens does not uh, coincides very well depending on where you place your L bracket. So when you change from horizontal to vertical, who knows exactly where is the lens center. Now for the disadvantages, I can say that this, um, this lens collar here, the LS75, it weighs a little more uh, than the L bracket. It's not a big deal. Uh, the L bracket is like 100 grams and this one is 160 grams. It's not a big deal. 60 grams more. But it adds weight. Also, the lens collar is more clumsy, more bulkier than the L bracket. And for assembling the lens collar, it takes a little more time. And if you change lens, you will also need to reset it. The big question is, is the lens collar a mandatory accessory for 
landscape photographers for architecture and interior photographers? So the answer is no. It is not a mandatory accessory, but it facilitates a lot your life. I've been using it on my camera for the past few weeks, and I can say that it really offers some advantages over the L bracket. If you're interested in the lens color, I will leave a link here in the description of this video. And please, write here in the comment section what do you think about the lens color? Would you use it? Are you going to buy it? Did you knew that this exists? Let me know here in the comment section. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.